You know, oh, he's, he's just complimenting his son. What's wrong with you? He's just complimenting his son. How dare you? It's just a, it's just a, it's just a new haircut. Hey everybody, welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard and welcome back to the show. We've got another one coming right now. Okay, so, oh, more stuff in the SBC. My beloved SBC. I own it, by the way. I don't know if you guys knew that. Um... <laughs> no, not even close. But uh, to catch everybody up a little bit, I know we've got a lot of new subscribers. Uh, I am a pastor in a Southern Baptist church in Kentucky. I went to the seminary, Southern Seminary, the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, the first one, the flagship in Louisville. I graduated a few years ago. And I'm not woke, woke don't worry. But I've been in that. I've been breathing that air for a while. I appreciate the SBC, the IMB, which is, of course, the mission board, uh, NAM, North American Mission Board, the church planting, and all that other stuff. Uh, I appreciate that overall. Uh, I'm not saying we should abandon ship just yet. I know some people say that. and Oh, it's dying. It's, it's full of hypocrisy, dead men's bones. Mm, eh, not full, but there's a lot. <laughs> but nevertheless... I, that's who I am, uh, married, and I've got children, and yeah, I want to see the gospel proclaimed. I want people to live unto the Lord. I'm tired of the nonsense that Christians, so-called, will put things above scripture, or they'll put, uh, you know, whatever it is, tribe, faction, politics, whatever. Doesn't mean we don't have those things. Doesn't mean we're not biased. We're all biased. You're biased, so am I, but what it does mean is is that we need to put Christ first. And so often, I went to my first convention back in June, uh, where uh, Ed Litton, the serial plagiarist, which if you want to look at, I've got some videos up here with him, um, he was elected, and James Merritt was there. And he was chairing the committee for resolutions, the resolution committee. And uh, he's he was the president of the SBC as well a while back. Uh, I heard him preach in chapel some when I was at Southern. Yeah, he's been around. He's been around. Well, recently, he also affirmed his son, who's like my age. Uh, he's a pastor, his son, so-called an elder at a church in New York City. Now, you know, we all know New York City, how conservative and evangelical and uh, Jesus-loving New York City is, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, cut. What? No. No, just kidding. But really, no. Even uh, evangelicalism, or just the gospel in general, is is pretty, pretty uh, vacant in cities like New York, sadly. But Jonathan Merritt, not James Merritt. James Merritt's the dad. I might have mixed those up. But James Merritt's the elder. Jonathan is the guy younger. He's my age. He is a um, open, same-sex attracted homosexual guy. Uh, he is a so-called pastor, elder at this church, the Good Shepherd Church in New York, and recently did a sermon and preached a sermon on um, Mark. And he preached a sermon on the Gospel of Mark. And his dad, James Merritt, tweeted about it, encouraging people to go listen. This is on November 22nd, so a couple weeks ago. Good Shepherd, New York. 112121. Link, YouTube, etc. I don't agree with my loved son, Jonathan Merritt, on everything, to be sure, but I encourage you to listen to his message on Mark 13. It is both brilliant and faithful to the gospel and the coming of Jesus. Brilliant and faithful, ladies and gentlemen. Brilliant and faithful to the coming of Jesus. Well, let's just listen to a little bit more of that sermon and see what he says. So, he praises him and he says, you know, we don't agree on everything, but you should listen to this sermon. That's what he says. Go and listen to this sermon. Go and listen to my openly gay son who has a relationship with a man who professes to be a Christian, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then he defends it and says, oh, you know, regardless of who, because he gets a lot of feedback, a uh, flack, right? Rightfully so. Uh, because you're saying, hey, go listen to this openly rebellious man who's living in sin. Uh, he's preaching the gospel. Now, can someone preach the gospel, preach truth, teach truth, and be an unbeliever? Of course. Of course they can. That's not the issue. The issue is, well, unbelief ultimately is the issue. 
But he gets back with one and says, some sodomy says, uh, someone says sodomy is a sin. I disagree with anyone who says it's not. Uh, and that's James Merritt, right? So he comes back and instantly defends. Now he's a visiting pres- professor at Southwestern, excuse me, Southeastern uh, Seminary in uh, North Carolina, which is the most leftist and liberal of the six seminaries by far, I think. Anyway, so Merritt defends this to a degree. Um, and his son, yeah, let's just listen to the sermon. And we'll see. Because not only is this church, just a little context, right? It's a New York City church. They're doing digital church, you know, Zoom church, still, still, after 20 months, living in fear, uh, not gathering together, not assembling, not participating, not fellowshipping. You can't do it online. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This isn't church, by the way. So if you think this is church, I'm not your pastor. This isn't church unless you are in my congregation. Hi, everybody. Um, but this isn't church. Particular Greek verb that is translated to watch numerous times in Mark 13. The meaning of this word, though, is not to be a passive spectator, but rather to be on the lookout. When your world falls apart, Jesus says, you don't need to worry. These events are not beyond God, who is working to bring forth new life. It's impossible to know how long the labor will last, but you can bet it'll be a difficult delivery. So Jesus says to keep watch because this pain is the sign of new life that may already even now be breaking in. One way that Christians can follow Jesus's advice to keep watch is to wait for the literal second coming of Jesus when all things will be made right at the end of time. Now, before you dismiss this as silly or superstitious, let me remind you that there's a long history of Christians doing exactly this kind of watching and not just end times junkies. This view has long sustained Christians who've been stuck living on the bottom rungs of the ladder, yearning with froth and fever for a final end to all of the injustice and oppression that keeps pushing them down, down, down. It was the American slaves, not the masters, who sang, my Lord, what a morning when the stars begin to fall. Yet for many of us, Living in the 21st century, watching for Jesus to literally return at the end of time is rather easy work. It doesn't demand we do anything differently than those who aren't waiting and watching. That's not true. So there is another way. Another way that we Christians can follow Jesus' encouragement here to keep watch in times like these. We can simply open our lives to the truth that just as the world is always ending, Christ is always coming again. We can begin to believe that there is a living God who can transform endings into beginnings and out of death can call forth new life. We can withdraw some of that energy that we're investing in worrying and reinvest it in watching. All right. So we can not worry, right? That's good. Don't worry. Um, don't worry about your life, what you eat or drink. Um, your life is worthy, worth more than that, worth more than a sparrow. Jesus says that, compares that, uh, worries a sin. It's a problem. Just like the world is ending, it's always, Jesus is always coming. That literally makes no sense. Absolutely no sense. Uh, the church that he is part of, uh, not only is obviously in a affirming church, um, affirming of sin, right? But it's also a universalist church. It's very inclusive. And by inclusive, I mean so inclusive that they've included everything but the truth. And so, yeah. (laughs) Or really, when you do include the truth and you include error, it's no longer the truth, right? You could tell the truth 99% of the time, but lie, and especially in a a crucial thing like, oh, I don't know, the gospel and redemption and forgiveness in Christ, and then all of a sudden you're just this rabid, total liar. (laughs) The point is, with something crucial like the truth, like redemption, like forgiveness of sin and new life, new life given only in the God man, Jesus Christ, nothing else. If you don't get that right, you, everything else is wrong. Everything else is wrong. So that's a problem. Uh, But of course he's here affirming this and has some sort of, you know, uh, weirdness, but his dad, James Merritt says, I'm affirming this. This is a good message. Go listen to this message. Wow. We don't agree. You know, it's, it's an agree to disagree sort of thing. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe that's what he's getting at. Maybe not. Uh, Or he's just soft peddling. But of course, others like Beth Moore and um, 
uh, Ed Litton. Oh, Ed Litton. I love you, Ed Litton. I really do. Um, affirm this whole scenario. It was a, it was a ugh, it's just ugh, so bad. It's just so bad. Uh, because all this is, is just political maneuvering. All it is is posturing. All it is is people trying to look cool and fancy and push and this and that. And it's not going to work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. And I'll close with this. People, atheists, unbelievers, people like uh, Jonathan Merritt, the, the so-called pastor in New York City, they don't want to bring in, especially unbelievers, but even, I mean, he's an unbeliever too, but fake, you know, make-believer Christians. They don't really like to bring in conservative Bible stuff. They don't really like to bring in, they don't add more conservatism to their liberalism, their leftism, their unbelief, generally. Whereas conservatives, quote unquote, so-called people who want to say, <laughs> oh, there's one other thing I got to show you. Uh, I almost forgot. They want to say, oh, you know, well, you got a soft pedal. We got a soft, because the problem is it's always the flesh. We always have this leftward drift. Always there's a leftward drift, whatever it is. We have to be brought back. A lot of times we have to cut it off and start fresh. Right? That's why we see new churches, new denominations, new businesses, even new governments around the world and so on that have to get restarted because people drift left. Nobody drifts right. Nobody drifts right. But you always drift left. There's one other thing, a little article, uh, it's just the headline, <laughs> and it's the Baptist Network that says, the article says, Conservative Baptist Network attacks James Merritt for compliment to son. Now, it's, 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 it's not about like his haircut, right? It's not about the fact that like, hey, you know, I really appreciate my son's work with World Vision or the Salvation Army or something like that. Oh, he's such, he's such a generous whatever. No, he is commending someone to, to go listen to this sermon, a Christian sermon, so-called. Go do this. It's a gospel-centered sermon, quote unquote. It's a good exposition of the gospel from the Gospel of Mark. But see, here's the thing. It's not. Even if it was somebody who, like a David Platt, who, you know, routinely will torture scripture or Matt Chandler, some of these other guys who are wearing their woke hat, although they're backpedaling a little bit. Even if that's the case, it's still a bad exposition, pulling out of scripture. You're like ex expositing. That's like excavating. Think about that. You're digging out what's there. So you can apply it to the hearer so you can understand what's going on then and how it applies to us now and what the Lord would have for us with it. That's, that's, but then also he's openly same-sex attracted, practicing homosexual, unbelief in a quote-unquote inclusive church, but it's really just universal church, which then means there's just, everybody gets saved. There's no real difference. doesn't really matter. Uh, so just go eat, drink for tomorrow, you die, whatever. That's a problem. But the Conservative Baptist Network isn't attacking that, as the Baptist uh, website says. You know, oh, he's, he's just complimenting his son. What's wrong with you? He's just complimenting his son. How dare you? It's just a, it's just a, it's just a new haircut. You're so crass and rude. But see, the Conservative Baptist Network, the CBN, you'll see this, uh, is against the wokeism and the ideology and the um, division of intersectionality and all the other junk that's happening. It is happening, ladies and gentlemen, in the SBC, in the church in general, in America, in the West. And they'll attack people because everybody needs a scapegoat. We don't really need an enemy because we have an enemy that roams around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. The enemy himself, Satan, right? who animates so much of this stuff. But they have this because now the Conservative Baptist Network is, is against, quote unquote, you know, unity. And it's like, but your unif unification and error isn't unity, right? You can't just postulate error and be like, oh yeah, well, that's fine. We just want to, you want to save face. We want to be a good example to the world by lying, by telling people the gospel isn't what the gospel is? No, that's not. That's not at all. At all. Good. That's 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 evil, <laughs> right? You're showing partiality. You're lying. Uh, and the Lord is not going to bless that at all. So turn to Christ if you have not turned to Christ. Seriously. Uh, because 
the world is passing away. Uh, and that's part of why I do this channel, being contra mundum against the world, but for the world, pro mundo, and helping people see that. I hope this finds you well. I hope you see this. And uh, please drop a comment and like and share if you don't mind. Uh, it does help it out, help the content get to more people and tell us the algorithm what to do with the content. So again, we'll see you on the next video. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, take care.